Hello guys and welcome back to another Skull the Hero Slayer speedrun this time. And I'm sorry if the uh, title has already given it away, but this is a great one. Um, as you just saw in the beginning, I picked up the Explosive Ointment and Draft Stone and sold the Draft Stone. I am 90% sure that the timer for the run does not begin until you leave the castle. So you can get items and sell them and make a little bit of cash to start with if you know it's going to be useless for the run, like the Draft Stone is for me. Starting off, as always, with the Rockstar for runs like this, I got Outro, which I'm really happy with, this electric sliding skill attack um, that leaves electricity on the ground. I think I'm going to go ahead and say that it probably is the best skill for a speed run. Um, I'm kind of between this and both of his other skills. Rockstar has no bad skills. They are all amazing, and I believe that they could all offer something a little bit different in a, in a speedrun context. But, picking up the Ring of Wind, I'll have to get rid of that later. It does nothing for Rockstar. Basically, some extra cash. I grabbed a uh, Rider a little bit earlier there. I... Uh, it was a decision because I thought, hey, if I get a good situation where I can use the bike... That might come in handy. Coming into the shop, grab the sword. The sword does buff his basic Jamalama, which you can see me spamming out here. I should have swapped into Rider Skull a little bit sooner, but it doesn't really bite me that much just because we had the Archer Adventurer and she has a tendency, as you saw, to knock you away at the start of the fight anyway, if you're standing too close. Quickly finish her off, grab the Killabarn Quintessence and move right along. I am, I am, there we go, there's the bike. I'm moving so quickly, I'm having a hard time keeping up the commentary here. This is post-commentary. I would not be able to speak coherently. Bit of a mistake right there. I, I zoomed way too fast and just kind of like got ahead of myself with speed. Went into the Rider Skull and uh, kind of regretted it and immediately went back into Rockstar. Grabbing the Elementalist Blessing? Binding? Either way, Blessing. There we go. We're getting rid of it and the Ring of Wind. To get a bit of cash, I was gonna get Bone Hourglass. Figured not. I'll go with the, I think, Sphinx Eye is that one. Um, because it increases magic attack by 40% and this electric slide attack that you can see, Outro, is indeed a magic attack. Killabarn is actually going to come in incredibly useful. That was an attempted outro to zip over to the big tree and then stay safe and not fall into the spike pit. You can see how well that worked out. This is a bit of an annoying room to have to deal with. There we go. That's what I tried to do the first time round. Kind of zip down, almost touch the spikes, but come back up. Getting another Ring of Wind. The game seems to uh, think I have a passionate connection with Ring of Wind. This is false. I do not. Don't believe it. Another annoying room to deal with quickly trying to take care of these guys and watch my meter down below. I'm trying to make sure I don't accidentally trigger it before coming into this fight here. There have been a few runs that I've tried to record in the past where I start with Rockstar at the beginning and I think, hey, let's try and make this a speed run. And then at some point during the run, I accidentally let the band loose before it's an adventurer or boss fight. So swapping straight into the Rockstar, you get 30 of his bar when you swap into him. Drop the amps down up close to his face so that we get maximum damage and make short work of Yggdrasil. I love that guy with the purple, like, sideways looking mohawk. That's an amazing looking haircut. <laughs> Grabbing the thief armor. Could fate have been giving me, like, anything better? No. That, it's, it's false. That is exactly what I needed. If not sooner than now, right before Act 2, Perfect timing. You're going to see shurikens. Thief's armor makes it so that my attacks shoot out shurikens. Your basic attacks will shoot out little ones, and I believe magic attacks and critical strikes will shoot out larger shurikens. It just, it's a lot of passive damage coming out, and it's what makes this run. Rockstar plus this item. I, I don't see a speed run happening without that combination at all. I did pick up, I think, the Coward's Cape was the item in that last room. It uh, reduces the cooldown and increases the distance of my dashing when there are uh, four or more enemies nearby, which is handy. I'm going to pick up the, uh, what's that, Beat of Darkness to stun enemies whenever I do swaps. 
That was 100% an impulse buy. I didn't even really think about it. I just bought it. In hindsight, probably a dumb pick. I'm not going to be swapping out of Rockstar too much in the beginning of this run. Well, for most of this run, until I can find a skull that is going to carry its weight as well or better than Rockstar. And for a run like this, with Thieves' Armor, very few skulls are going to keep up with Rockstar's damage output. As you can see, he is sharking, snaking, lioning, every other predator that preys on small, weak foes, he's doing it. Swapping into the Rider in advance, like I should have before, to get that 30 Rockstar bar. And if you can see down below, my cooldown isn't quite back yet. I am moving at a nice quick pace. If my cooldown hasn't come off yet by the time I get to the next fight... Oh, very quickly. Paladin, Shadow Knights, and the Bandit's Knife. I think it's Bandit's Knife. I keep calling it the wrong thing. But that was a very difficult decision to make. But Shadow Knights, 90% more physical attack passively and a really good use effect. I'm definitely going to be taking uh, Shadow Knights. But like I was saying, if I can make it to the next adventure or boss fight and my cooldown has not come off yet, then I know I'm moving at a very good pace because usually the cooldown comes off prior to that and I even have the opportunity of accidentally triggering my band before getting to those fights. Being able to hold onto it for as long as possible is excellent. Going to use Shadow Knights here. Explode that large charger enemy. Don't want to have to deal with him. Get him out of my way. Those big meat sponge enemies wasting my time. And the shield dudes actually do become a little bit annoying. The outro attack, the electric slide, does help in dealing with them. Uh, I swap into Samurai here to replace my Rider Skull. But... I, I think I will show off soon that it was kind of another impulse pickup that doesn't really bear too much fruit. The damage just isn't big enough nor quick enough. He doesn't attack quick enough to trigger a Thieves' Armor the same way that Rockstar does, which is the main reason it pairs so beautifully. And I think one of the main reasons why the devs... Oh, here we go. Picking up Fighter. This is what I need. I need a nice strong skull to... Uh, take the reins for a bit. Uh, but I think that's why the uh, developers were <laughs> on the ball when it came to deciding that Rockstar should not be allowed to have attack speed boosts from items and effects, because if he was able to jam any faster than he already is, it would just be an entire screen full of shurikens and just on effect damage. I have uh, bottled embers at the moment, and just about every enemy I come into contact with is being set on fire due to the amount of hits he deals. Another meat sponge enemy here. I want him to die. I want him to die. I don't want to drop an amp on him, which I sometimes drop amps on the larger enemies, like the trees in Act 1, these guys in Act 2, and the summoners in Act 3. But the cooldown on my... Uh, big rock band summon has come off and I'm very anxious about that. If the band gets summoned at the wrong time, that's a run killer. May as well stop and reset because you will not be killing the uh, the boss or the adventurers quick enough to make up that lost time. Coming into the second major boss fight, the Liana sisters with Fighter. I'm going to use Fighter's uh, meter ability, his Berserk mode. In phase one, uh, I took a, a bit of hesitation there, thinking I need to dodge this attack, but my health is a resource for things like this. I can't afford to try and avoid damage too much. I have to get in there and kill these bosses ASAP. Going into Berserker mode, blitzing the enemy down. I do have the nuclear punch attack, but it just takes too long to use and waste my time. First sister went down incredibly quickly, swap into the uh, Rockstar Skull and time out the amps, the Shadow Knights, look at that. A full health second phase Dark Liana sister nuked. Tactical nuke inbound, she's done. Alright, that guy's gonna waddle off in absolute terror and fear. Grabbing the Priestess's Veil, selling off the Ring of Wind, Beat of Darkness, and Bottled Embers. Getting rid of the trash. I've mentioned this in previous runs. Whenever I'm 
uh, forced to sell any items, I may as well take that opportunity while I'm in the menu and quickly sell off any other future items that I would already get rid of anyway, just so I'm not constantly going in and out of the menu every time I find a new item that I want to hold on to. My rock star is still, uh, my rock band rather, is still on cooldown, so I don't really have any problems with using amps and uh, pushing that meter. I went into fighter there to kind of test the waters and see how well he does, but like I said, I don't think anything shy of Grim Reaper would be uh, as effective at clearing rooms as Rockstar is right now. Give me Grim Reaper with some uh, Sentence and Harvest, and then we're talking, but right now, no. Rockstar is just too good for this. Activate Shadow Knights, blow up those summoners, get rid of that mess. Save the Quintessence use uh, for some of these more difficult rooms with harder to kill large health enemies. I do kind of wish I had it here. I didn't predict. You can't predict that you're going to get rooms like this where you have two summoner circles in the same room. But as you can see, just dropping an amp at each spot is enough to uh, blow the enemies up. Another Dark Paladin, another Beat of Darkness. Going to pick up the bomb just because it gives 35% physical attack. And believe it or not, most of the damage that I'm dealing with Rockstar is physical damage between the regular basic attack that I'm doing and the shurikens, which also do physical damage. Uh, the only thing magic I'm really doing are the amps and the outro slide attack. There we go, handle those ogres. That's also why I picked up Shadow Knights. Anything to boost my physical attack, very welcome indeed. Grudge Stone, I grabbed it just thinking that whatever else was going to be lost and tossed out wasn't that big of an issue. Um, kind of a reflex pickup. I should have just walked away and ignored Grudge Stone. I lost Priestess's Veil there, which is a bit of a loss because it can boost my physical attack and my movement speed as two of the potential buffs that it can give. Both fantastic for runs like this. That dash missed. I tried to get up high enough to land on the ledge and didn't. Take care of this guy. This kind of room is annoying because I have to get rid of this enemy and then wait for extra spawns. I like the rooms where all the enemies are there, ready to be blown up right from the start. Ancient Incense Burner. That reduces the cooldown on my quintessences by 50%. Double the Shadow Knights, double the fun. I had a late start getting into Rockstar there, but given the uh, adventurers, like as you just saw there, the Priestess did jump to the other side. So it might have actually been beneficial to stall a little bit, because if I dropped the Rock Band over on the Priestess, the Sword Boy at the very least would have uh, run over and gotten in the way. As a result, I lost a little bit of time there. Preferably I want them all to die in a hurry, but I didn't lose too much time. The first two heroes did go down pretty quickly. Hesitated a little bit to pick up any items there, because I didn't actually want anything. But the door's not going to open unless I pick something up, so... Quickly pick up and then swap back out the Quintessence and move on through. Coming into this room right here, which is a little bit annoying, but considering that we have Shadow Knight's Thieves Armor and just a lot of power in general, we're able to take care of some of the larger, more annoying enemies like the Large Alchemists and the Ogre nice and quick. I am now prioritizing item rooms as much as possible. I am intending to keep the fighter for the entire run. The odds of me getting Grim Reaper or Arc Lich but specifically Arklich with something like uh, probably Seal. Unlikely. It's more worth my time to go after item rooms and try and find some better items. The, uh, I think, Wind Cloak. I forget what the exact name of that item was there, but that is what I want more so than the Coward's Cape. This is what gives me extra dashes and increased distance. Incredibly useful item. Sad I didn't get it earlier in the run, or the Silphid Wings, both of those. If I had this item and Silphid Wings, I would be literally flying like Superman through the air. Absolute Speed King. But getting it at this point isn't bad either. I'm not going to complain. Picking up the Thieves Black Steel Dagger, extra critical strike, get rid of the Sphinx Eye, great decision by me. Pat myself on the back, I don't need as much magic damage now. We need to stack up physical damage. And some critical hit does not help, uh, doesn't hurt whatsoever. Coming into this room here with all the vials. 
At first, I think to myself, it might be a bit of a pain dealing with the vials, but no. Doesn't matter. If you get hit, it doesn't matter. I'm still on my first life bar, and I'm three health away from full health. When you start killing enemies quick enough, you find that they don't even get a chance to do damage to you, so... Don't worry too much about your health in these kinds of runs. And even if you do lose lots... There you go, there's that wind armor showing its, showing its use. Even if you do lose a fair bit of health, the idea is to kill the enemies quickly anyway. No use worrying about it. Swap into Rockstar. Get the bar going nice and early. Drop the amps, summon the Shadow Knights, shurikens galore. Look at that health melt. Numbers. There are accountants out there that deal with less numbers than what we just saw on screen right there. Going into the fighter, and my idea was I'm going to use fighter's berserk mode. But oh no, look at that. Discovery has been made. It looks as though the, uh, the cooldown was not active. It wasn't available. I don't know if Rockstar shares a cooldown with the fighter. But either way, the Chimera still went down really quickly, but that's something to bear in mind. I may have to test that and uh, see if that's the case in future runs. Decapitate the Rockstar, slice my head off. Here we go, the final timer, as seen in the title, 1531. Fantastic, you can see my loadout right there of all the items I had by the end. 1531 crushes my previous run record by at least a minute. A fantastic run for sure. I'm very pleased with that one. There were some mistakes, of course. Uh, I made just little errors here and there, small judgment calls that probably cost me a few seconds here and there, but otherwise, nothing catastrophic. I'm very pleased with how this run turned out. And something interesting to bear in mind with the inscription update coming out, hopefully within this month, this is more than likely the very last a uh, speed run that you'll see from me before the inscription update comes in and affects the items and gives us this big boost to power. I am expecting that once that update comes out, assuming that they don't do any item changes like balance updates and nerf the thieves armor and a few other the items and uh, nerf the rock star, um, we can only expect to see these numbers getting faster. I can only imagine what will happen when you start giving more power to these types of speed runs. We're probably looking at getting down close to Oh god, I, I don't even know what the rest of the inscription effects are right now, but I can only imagine how insane it's going to get. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching along with me. I hope that my commentary answered any potential questions. If I did miss anything, feel free to ask in the comments below and I will answer any and all inquiries about the run. I also need to mention I've finally gone ahead and created a Twitter account for the YouTube channel. I'm not really big on social media, never have been, but I figure it's 2020, I'm trying to make YouTube content and not having a social media presence is brain dead. Links will be in the description below. It is pretty much brand new, so don't expect there to be too much on there, but I will have it updated with all of the new videos that come out from now on, as well as just little nuggets of insight. So come Come give a follow if you care. I'll see you over there. And with all of that out of the way, thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a good one.